I'm a psychotherapist. My PhD is in sexology. So clinical sexology, that means that anything that has to do with sex from um, erectile dysfunction to uh, somebody deciding, okay, wait, I think I'm transgender. How do I come out to infidelity in couples to um, addiction? And is there such a thing as sex addiction to, um, so anything sex. And then I also have a master's in mental health. So I, depression, anxiety, um, a clinical um, addiction specialist. So I've got certification in that. So have an addiction piece. So a lot of different things. And it's amazing how all the roads intersect, isn't it? I was just about to ask you how related is our sexuality and our relationship to it and our mental health? Um, I think very much so. A lot of times, um, I mean, we know we have sex with our brains. So if you've got depression or anxiety, then you're going to, it, um, it prevents you from performing. It even brings in shame or guilt or just the old tapes and that, right? It just is, I'm just doing erectile dysfunction, but it's women too, low libido and, um, so, so many things and addiction, if you've got, I mean, if you're using uh, drink, drugs, that kind of stuff can affect your libido, can affect your, um, and it's hormonal. It's, it's all these hormones in the brain that are um, oxytocin, endorphins, serotonin, melatonin. I mean, the best cocktail you could have. And if we, um, so it's, it's uh the, the the mental health stuff does affect it very much so it stops hormones and so for example um oxytocin sexual chemical right it's about touch it's about and we can actually get it without touching people that that's not necessarily known but you can and it's the feel-good hormone it gives you not only connection but helps you with depression and anxiety and so it's, it's amazing how do we get oxytocin without touching? What are some of the things that trigger that? So um, music, for example, is a, is a great way. We get oxytocin from just the idea, the thoughts of, and the much like virtual reality feels like you're there. And so you're releasing chemicals. Adrenaline is a really easy one to see if you're, or if you're gaming or if you're whatever, you're not touching anything. Nobody's even around. And yet you're getting this rush of chemicals. Same thing with oxytocin. You can get the rush of chemicals just by having that feeling of connection, which does not have to be touch. And you're touching yourself if all is going well. <laughs> right. You know, it's interesting because at Live Jasmine, we have seen so many, I mean, really profound relationships develop between a model and a member. These relationships, some of them have gone on for 15 years. And so we're starting to take an interest in the bonding that's taken place. The Kinsey Institute is studying the dynamic between a model and member through Live Jasmine. And what I'm kind of wondering when you're talking about the fact that you don't, because these people don't touch, they don't meet in person. It's all through a screen. And when you mention that you can still release oxytocin, which we know is one of the most bonding hormones, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm wondering if it's possible that these members and models, some of them have started releasing oxytocin through that connection. Um, yeah, I would say absolutely. Um, and same thing with serotonin and melatonin. Serotonin is the relaxing chemical. So just having that connection, melatonin is the, helps us sleep, helps us. So endorphins, you know, we've heard about runner's high, but you get endorphins just by interacting. And, um, a lot of, for example, patients of mine who, uh, frequent, um, the bars where you can watch somebody dance or to, the thing that they talk about is not the experience of watching them dance or getting a lap dance or any of that. It's, I felt like that person connected with me. I felt like we had a relationship, it had nothing to do with any, it was just this bond. It's low on the brainstem stuff. It's, it's the thing that is, we need it. It saves our lives, right? We, um, 
animals are meant to be around people. And so it's a, it's a lifesaver, that bonding chemical stuff. Really? Yeah. Um, you know, it's really interesting that you mentioned that you have clients or patients that will tell you, Hey, I went to, I'm assuming maybe like a strip club or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. And I just felt connected to this dancer, or we talked about, I don't know, golf for seven hours. I don't yeah, know. yeah. Yeah. But having, um, that be reported as the main thing that stood out to them, it makes me wonder, and and I think you're probably a good person to ask if you have patients that are engaging in um, dance clubs like that, or maybe camming itself, are people going to these establishments or these platforms, are they going there just to get off? Or in many cases, is there this underlying need, maybe they don't even realize it, that they're going there to meet that need, to be seen, to be heard. What are your thoughts around that? I think you're spot on. It's connection. Again, it's that um, just, I want to be seen and heard. You put it beautifully. Yeah. That's a, that's a big thing. Even people coming in with depression or anxiety, it's the, that, or fear of it's not, nobody notices me. And the, the worst thing, thing is not being alone for people it's being lonely so alone is you're in your room nobody's there but lonely is I can't reach out to anybody there's nobody that I could call that would come and so no pun intended so um that that connection and even camming I mean camming is a connection you're seeing somebody I'm seeing you right now so very comforting it is. And, you know, that's one of the things that I myself, as I've really, you know, dove into these interviews, I've interviewed at this point, hundreds of members, models, human connection experts. And um, one of the things that has really come through on the member side is, yeah, many of them are looking for a sense of comfort, like, when I think of my own life, there are a few people in my life that I know if I call or text them, they're going to respond or be there. And sometimes just knowing that is enough, I actually don't even need to call or text them. It's just so comforting to know that I have a few people that I know are there. And some members, I think, don't feel like they have people like that outside or in their day-to-day -day life. And so knowing that this platform is there, no matter what time it is, they're going to be able to talk to someone, to connect with someone. I can see how that potentially could be comforting and, and just really uplift someone who may be needing it. Just knowing like, yes, for sure. I can go to this platform at 3 a.m. and there's going to be interaction for me. It's a lifesaver, frankly. I mean, when you're talking about people who are um, thinking about suicide, which th that connection, that just sex is communication and just to be able to communicate with somebody else. That's why there were hotlines or are suicide hotlines. That's even in, if you're in um, any anonymous group, whether it's uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, there's a sponsor. You get to call your sponsor at, if you feel like you're you're at a low point or you just need somebody to talk to, it's it's built in. It, this is, I mean, it's it's so needed and wonderful. Do you, what are your thoughts on um, cam models or even using the other example of dancers being like a type of surrogate relationship or intimacy partner? Yeah, I think again, spot on. And what the heck is wrong with that? If you want a non judgmental place, if you want a place where you can just be yourself and um, not worry about you're going to offend or somebody's going to kick, kick you out of the group or any of that, it's it's lovely. And also your learn. It's, people don't learn 
about sex and they're embarrassed by how little that they they know there's a um unfortunately it's such a taboo subject so coming into a situation where you don't know wait a minute there's such a thing as nipple clips wait a minute there's such it's okay if i like anal stimulation and so these kind of things are i mean eye opening for people there's that shame and guilt and you have a place where, again, you can just be yourself, come as you are, and you don't have to dress up, you don't have to put makeup on, you don't have to, any of that, you're just you, and you're accepted. Woo. Obviously, camming has an explicit um, context, but sometimes there's not. Um, I've interviewed many models who are like, yeah, I've not... I've never taken my top off. I've never taken anything off. I don't show anything. I might be flirty, but really people come to me and talk to me. Like they they pay some of these models for their conversation alone. And um, as a side note, I just, I always give them their kudos because when you can get people to pay just to talk to you, <laughs> they're not even... <laughs> you know, showing anything, that's a real skill to be that interesting, you know, Welcome to my world, right? That's what I yeah, do. <laughs> absolutely. 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 And it's therapy. It really is. It is therapeutic. Yes. Um, but you know, back to this, this idea of a platform where you can go and be yourself and you are essentially paying for a positive experience, but you do get a positive experience. Mm -hmm. Even taking the sexuality out of that, I'm thinking about if something like that existed, that was just for conversation, you know, and how, like you said, like healing that could be for someone. That's what a therapist does. Yeah, that's what a therapist does. Yeah. So it's it's exactly that. And we know that there's a need. And we used to not have um, parity between physical and mental health. And that you had to have for insurance, for example, you had to buy an, a whole separate part of insurance because they didn't believe mental health was it, it, it matter, right? It's physical health and then mental. But now they're, that's changing. And I think that um, mental health is about connection and communication. Sex is about communication. Do you feel from your perspective that someone could be sexually fulfilled or intimately fulfilled from a platform like Life Jasmine or Camming? Oh, yes. Yeah. And it's, it's again about positive chemicals to the brain. And you, you can literally hug yourself and feel comforted and um safer by hugging yourself it's same thing with touching yourself yeah i can imagine somebody else is doing that i can imagine that's because it's in the brain right it's it's an easy thing to think about if you look at people who have lost a limb and have those phantom pains like their leg still hurts there's no limb there but it's in the brain so yeah, we can have that experience. We can have that connection of feeling like that person gave me those pleasurable, positive feelings and vibes. Yeah, that's fascinating. That is really fascinating. Um, throughout your years of seeing patients, I'm curious if there's any theme or common block to sexual health or intimacy that you have seen repeatedly? Um, lack of knowledge is a big one. And then the uh, shame, guilt, embarrassment piece of, you know, I like this. Is that what's wrong with me? Or I don't like that. What's wrong with me? Or so there's, um, or embarrassed about what you like. I mean, there's um, puppy play, for example, I don't know if you know anything about that, where um, people are literal puppies and you have uh, a puppy that is the top dog, the alpha, and then you have, um, and it's it's all kinds of, there's jewelry that goes with it. There's, uh, and you're a puppy shaking a little and wagging your tail and doing, and there's groups that meet like that. Or I'm sure you've heard of people who uh, like to dress like babies. And again, whole industry 
about that. They they have adult sized cribs and and outfits and so I think it was Carl Jung who said the only abnormal sex act is the one you can't imagine. So anything goes and being able to just be expressive and creative. It's um, it's very right brain. It's the creative part. It's not the linear. Here's the way you do it. And people think that there's a, I'm doing it wrong. Um, if I don't do this, if I'm, I'm not successful, some people have never had an orgasm and are embarrassed about that and don't want to tell anybody that. So there's again, not that communication faking, I started in uh, addiction working with women who had um, were inpatient alcoholism, and that was in what was that like ninety three? Okay, so quite long. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, what has your thirty years in this industry taught you about people? Is there one thing that j- or humanity? Probably the the desire to be um, seen and accepted for who they are, really who they are, and for somebody to know them. Wow. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Teary, you know, gets gets you teary. Yeah, absolutely. Because it also kind of just, it makes sense um, why certain industries are so successful when I hear that. Even even camming, you know, it's like if everyone is wanting at their core to feel seen and heard and accepted, wherever they sense that they may be getting some of that is probably where they're going to go or spend their money. And I'm sure this influences infidelity as well. If someone's not feeling seen or heard in a relationship and then their new secretary is really listening to them. I mean, like, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. There's a, again, it's the, um, uh, somebody to know you, somebody who really knows you. And I, I think that Tammy can, can give a person that just in that it's, it's intimate and it's just two people. I, um, had a radio show. Um, I was in entertainment before this and, um, it's what, it's a very one-on-one experience, right? Yeah. It's radio and you're being broadcast to a bunch of people, but, When you're listening to, when you were listening, so old fashioned now, but when you were listening to a radio show, it was usually alone, right? And it was a talk show. So people could call in and talk back and forth with me, but they're alone in their car, in their home or in their, so it was just the two of us connecting. And I think that there's something there of feeling, again, heard, seen, accepted, listened to even if you disagree with somebody. Yeah. But even if you're getting a dram, even if you're getting a whiff, especially for somebody who um, is in need, isn't it a wonderful thing? Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, I have talked to and interviewed members who have said that they were in a place where they were feeling suicidal and they developed a very like specific friendship with a model who kind of brought them out of that because it was just a little bit of friendship. You know what I mean? And it was just enough that it uplifted them enough to where now they're not in the, you know, depths of hell basically in their, in their mind. And now they're, they're depressed, but they're not at that below range, you know? And so, like you said, sometimes just a little bit of connection, just a little bit of feel good, a little bit of comfort can be enough to bring us to another level of not being maybe in a dangerous place, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it gives us hope, right? If, if I can connect with somebody, if I can be seen if I can be with with somebody okay maybe I can do it with another person and another person and another person and hope is the key to um 
everything. They, kids who were, are on cancer wards, they talk about, even if they think, okay, they may even die tomorrow or today, but they talk about, um, okay, in three days, what do you want for dessert? So that the person has hope, the little kid has hope of pudding rather than I'm going to die, what do I care? And in a lot of countries, this idea of you have six months to live, doctors are not even allowed to say that because the absence of hope will make you sick and, and kill you. And Camden gives you hope of, I did it. I actually had some kind of communication where I was myself with somebody. Okay, I got this. Build on that. Yeah, that's really true. And I've certainly seen that to be true firsthand. My next question to you would be, um, you know, around camming and not just camming, but pretty much anything that has to do with sexuality. Um, there's so much stigma and backlash and casting off from the group, <laughs> basically. Um, mm -hmm. And yet some of these things are providing a lot of good. How do we, I don't know how to, how do we protect the space? How do we move the conversation forward? How do we open people's eyes to understanding that um, our sexuality in and of itself isn't just some raunchy, horrible thing to, you know, cast aside. It's part of who we are and, and platforms that um, encourage sexuality some of them, and in some cases, are doing a real service. Yeah, I agree. Um, so my dissertation for my PhD was how to encourage, um, how to promote healthy sex talk in the media. And so I interviewed TV, radio, record, all these different, and every frigging single person said you can't. You can't promote healthy sex talk in the media. And but okay, so um, I think we're seeing a huge shift. I don't think anybody thought that there would be a, this kind of internet interaction. I don't think it, so it wasn't even thought about, but it was, um, we'll lose the sponsors, we'll lose the money, we'll lose the support. I mean, cause it's all came down to money in, in those industries, theater, whatever. Um, I think if we can take that element well, not necessarily take the element out, but um, if we've taken that fear of we're going to lose the things that are supporting us and we change it, change the conversation to let's get some healthy talk out there. Let's it's not just the negative. It's not just the and um, so promoting healthy sex talk, healthy sex information, um, open mindedness and people who are um, part of a group that you may not even know exists or just the more open and um, honest. And I think the, the internet is fantastic for that because we can now see people in different countries and different, whatever, we can see all kinds of people doing all kinds of things. I'm curious if in your time in your career, your long career, um, if there's ever been a piece of research that you've seen that just really stuck with you, you thought it was so interesting. Huh. Um, gosh, I mean, I can only think of the latest thing that I saw, but it has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Um, maybe I can make it have something to do with it but anyway it was just a, a friend of mine a colleague of mine gave me this new york times article about a woman who had been um catatonic and was experiencing severe schizophrenia and was that way for 20 years and then some um a doctor started experimenting with um viruses and and it turns out that she had uh, a virus that was not, um, yeah, it was um, lupus, but never tested for it. And so when they started to cure her um, lupus, she came out of this catatonia and she's functional and she's, she lasts 20 years. But so I, I 
think that in those kind of, um, I guess, the innovations of um, as we get a more open minded sexually, as we, I don't think we know the um, the power that sexual activity and um, things to do with we have it's a drive so there must be something much like again going back to the drive for food so there maybe there's something more that we don't even know that we are missing and we also know that the the chemicals that you get from sex and touch and um, but just in, in thinking about it are healing oxytocin helps in um cure diseases or not cure but helps in ameliorating or eradicating diseases as does serotonin as does melatonin and as does endorphins as does so maybe there's a way that rather than some pharmaceutical company giving us a pill we can have some you know engage in some sex acts that will be healing to us i think we might be missing something I agree. Yeah, I agree. Um, there's so many components that are healing about our sexuality and the connection, the like, that's just love energy, creative energy. We know that's the most powerful force on the planet creates other humans, right? So yeah, yeah very interesting. Yeah. And then I would also say laughter is also a great medicine. So getting back to when we were talking about the shame and stuff, but it's, I mean, it's can be hilarious, right? So it's, sometimes that communication, that sex stuff can be funny, can be, let it be. You don't have to hold back. You don't have to be embarrassed or something, something there too. You know, um, as a side note about cures and laughter, I remember hearing on a documentary one time, a man who was diagnosed with cancer and I think it was a very uh, progressed stage of cancer. And he was like, you know what? I'm, <laughs> he didn't do any like chemotherapy or any treatments like that, but he went home and he watched comedy movies for like weeks or I forget the time period, months. All he did was laugh and he went into remission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know about Norman Cousins who did that with, he had heart disease. Oh, he was wow. a journalist and did that in the, I think it was the sixties. Wow. And yeah. So hell yeah. So <laughs> and the, the chemicals released in laughter are similar to the chemicals released in sex. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Joy, right. Or mm -hmm. bliss. Yeah, I don't know. Pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. Is there anything about the sexual health, space industry that we haven't talked about, but that you want people to know or understand? Um, I guess going back to uh, sexual experimentation and um, being open to it. So yeah, clinical sexology, went to school a bunch um, and can talk, you know, a bunch of talking, but I can't do any sex act this is what we were talking about at the beginning, right? So I can only take a person or people to a certain place. But the idea that there is then somebody who can be a sex expert, a sex expert that is actually engaging in the act takes it to the next, you know, it, it, again, it builds on it. So you got the foundation of the brain stuff and then you get the foundation or and then you build on that. So I think that there's a... Um, it's it's a great addendum. It it's not legal in Washington. It is legal in California, for example. But they have um, sex surrogates. The therapist refers mm -hmm. to the sex surrogate and says, "We got somebody with this going on," and so they work in tandem. Um, Kamala, the vice president, actually, there was a sexologist or a psychologist in California who was using one of these experts and was sued. And she argued against and, you know, and got him off. I was going to say got him off, but that's not a great choice of words, but got, you know, but helped him out. So it's, I hopefully we get this legalized in Washington state. I'm not going to wood and, and other places, but just having a place where since it isn't legal here that I can say, 
hey, go, why don't you go try this platform and see what you think? And, and it would be wonderful if in some way you, you, the therapist, could work with the people on the platform and say whatever, you can work out confidentiality and those kinds of details. But say I've got somebody struggling with this or somebody wants to explore BDSM or somebody. And so then handing them off to the next person. That is really interesting idea. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Do that. Could you do that? <laughs> I know we had a group of models for a while that were specifically trained to recognize and deal with soldiers who had PTSD and they were enrolled in kind of like a special program that was really specifically for military that had PTSD and dealing with them because a lot of them were coming to the site. And so this seems very similar to me where it could potentially be, you know, then you're dealing with licensed therapists who are saying, hey, I have a client who's dealing with this. I'd like him to or her to experience X, Y, and Z. And then the model can make that happen. That, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's marvelous. Or, you know, tra or trauma. Tra the oxytocin and the chemicals you get from sex help in dealing with trauma. And when you were talking about um, specific groups like veterans or um, PTSD, and I thought of also geriatrics who yeah. are, um, how do they get it? Where do they get it? And they're dealing with a lot of grief and loss and even inability in their own lives or um so this is a it's a wonderful it would be a wonderful thing to have be able to refer to hey why don't you try this they don't have to go anywhere they don't have to so it would be marvelous yeah I'm thinking of people I could refer right now <laughs> it's incredible thank you so much I really enjoyed this interview oh me too thank you I really am so glad you found me and yeah love to love what you're doing and keep keep expanding we it's so needed it's so beneficial so yay on you guys take care well done you really thank nice you. interview <laughs> thank you so much